If we've shown you how to make your own delicious fries, it only made sense that we show you how to make your own delicious pots. With five sauces. For dipping or for putting on other things. You can never have too many little sauce recipes in your pocket, can you? Well, out of your pocket in a bowl for you to use. Just keeping them in your pocket would be stupid. But before we start anything, may I just say, it's time to address something on my arm. It's a thing for cooks and chefs to get tattoos. They often have them on the inside right here. There's like forks and knives and cauliflower and their favorite foods, that kind of stuff. Well, I have one. Should we look? Let's see it. Here it is. Boom. It's a little puppy dog. It's a sticker that my nieces gave me yesterday and we were gonna put it on my face and their mom said, oh, it comes off easy, just wash it. Well, this is having washed it once at home and once again this morning in the shower and guess what? It ain't going away anytime soon. Clearly, I'm a badass. Where did I wanna put it? Max wanted to put it on my forehead and I was all for it. Nobody talked us off the ledge including Katie, the mother, who uh, presumably would have stopped it had it started. Can you imagine this <laughs> here for a week? Who knows when this comes off? All right, here's the plan. Let me just show you what I have here. Two peeled potatoes. Yes, I found my peeler. They've been covered with cold water. I have them on the heat now on my grill. They will come to a boil and I will leave them about six minutes. I don't want them completely soft and tender, still a little give, and then we take it from there. Okay, so it's been like seven minutes. They're sort of parboiled. You can poke a knife in, it goes just a little bit in. I'm now gonna drain these, rinse them with cold water and let them sit. I'll let them cool so I can handle them, but I don't really want them sitting in water, so. I'll take them out, I'll put them on a tray, and we'll be fine. Set them aside, now we get to our sauces. Truffle aioli, and this I think is gonna be my fave. And don't worry about the amounts you watch me put in, just go to the recipe online, that'll help you out. Mayo, of course, we're starting with some mayo. And now a little truffle oil, white truffle oil, black truffle oil, doesn't really matter. That's about a quarter cup, I'm gonna use about a quarter, I don't know, tablespoon or so of this. Feels like that to me, yum. We're gonna give it some garlic, as promised. A little lemon juice, schwing. A little salt and pepper. I wonder how many of our viewers know that reference. Schwing? Wait, Chance, do you know that reference? Schwing. Schwing? No, see, I'm like barely on the edge. It's Wayne's World. Ah, oh, I played Wayne's World in the uh, sixth grade Christmas play. Really? Yeah. Well, who were you? I played Wayne. My you did? I played Garth, yes. That's hilarious. <laughs> Oh! Shut up. Nope, I'm okay. Oh my god. I could have brought a big knife out. I don't know why I didn't. Uh, okay, and then just some parsley. In it goes, and we mix. And then you want to taste because you want to adjust seasonings and or add more truffle oil if you are so inclined. Garlic truffle. Quick taste. A Little bit more uh, truffle oil. Just a bit, and then we're there. I know I was trying to put in about a quarter of a tablespoon and I really missed the mark because I have measuring problems. But that will be delicious. So now we'll take this, we'll put it in a little dish. Look how cute this little dish is. It's so cute, it matches my badass tattoo. All right, that's number one. Next up, curry ketchup. Oh, one of my favorite things. Super simple, we start with some ketchup. Seems pretty obvious. It's about a quarter cup, and I'm gonna add about a teaspoon and a half of curry powder. Look, use as much as you want, use as little as you want. But if you're a curry fan, you'll like this. And if you've ever been to Germany and had a curry wurst, you've had a version of this. Probably more complicated, but whichever one it is, is freaking delicious. We'll put it in one of these cute little things. Shit, look at what I did, there you go. Everybody's fine. The theme of today is just cute. Cute! Next up, chipotle mayo, so delicious, very easy. Just get your standard mayo. You know, I don't use standard mayo, I use Japanese mayo. In a little bowl with the sauce out of a can of chipotle chilies. It's the adobo sauce that they come with. And we'll give a little squeeze of lime, beautiful. A little pinch of salt and pepper. Pepper, I mean, look, you don't need the pepper because it's already spicy enough, but I've got it mixed and the salt will help enhance the flavors and we mix. Would you like cilantro on this one? Sure. Okay, I'll go get it. Oh my God. And the cilantro that I forgot. 
Once a video, boys, I'm going to forget something. Everybody knows that. That's going to be amazing. Now into a little container, into a sweet little, oh, for God's sakes. You know, I have to do this and this and this and this. Perfect. All right, this goes away. All right, next up is spicy honey mustard. It's a little mayo. And by the way, any of the mayo that I'm using could be subbed for sour cream if you want something. I like these a little richer, but you do you. Dijon mustard. I'm using hot honey. You could use regular honey. I'm just telling you, the hot honey is really the way to go. Gorgeous, gorgeous. Salt and pepper, little bit of lemon juice. And now my manly tattooed arm will come in and hold the bowl while we mix. Perfect. And I'll put the yellow sauce in the little baby yellow bowl. Trying to be neater than I was before. Yeah, don't be hasty. No haste, no haste. Oh, you oh f up. piece of shit. We're fine. Nobody ever said we were delicate. We're definitely not that. Last but not least is a quick little Asian combo. And again, we'll begin with some mayo, a little hoisin sauce, essentially Chinese barbecue sauce, and a little chili paste, actually garlic chili paste. Beautiful, we mix, yum. Yum, yum. Last dish. Please don't mess this up, Samuel. Beautiful. All right, these are all ready. Now we can address our potatoes. Here's our potatoes. They've cooled down. They're still a touch warm, but I can deal with them. So now we're going to grate them. But because moisture will not be our friend here, let me put a new towel in here, a clean towel. Fuck you, moisture. <laughs> and my grater. And now I start to grate, just like this. Just grate both of them. Well, you're done. Look, you could uh, use a potato ricer that would make it more like a mashed potato type product, but I think that the shredded potato gives you a crispier tot with more edges and little corners and crevices. Shred away, baby. Just shred away until you get down and you're close and you can stop and you can do the other one. And when you're done, check your work. There you go. Now there's a chance there's some moisture in it. I think we did a pretty good job. I let the potatoes dry, but you would want to do this move. And if nothing comes out, you're golden. Perfect. So drop the potatoes in, break these kids up a bit into their little shreds. Now we add the following. We're gonna put about a tablespoon of all purpose flour in like that. And then some garlic powder. Look, here's the thing. This is about a teaspoon, I think. You could use anything, literally anything that you want in terms of flavoring. I'm using garlic powder. I'm using a little smoked paprika. You know, I'm a fan of it. I'm gonna use some oregano. I'm gonna use a little onion powder, a little salt and pepper, and then I'm gonna mix them with my hands. You okay with that, Max? Fine. And you wanna try and get everything, as you would if you're mixing, evenly distributed. And you can see they're pretty sticky, right? You know that these are gonna form into our little tot buddies in about three minutes, in about two minutes in about one minute. Okay, now, so here's what we're gonna do. I like a tiny bit of oil on my hands. I find it keeps these from sticking too much. And now you want a pretty much like a solid little chunk, like Max's dog, Sonny. What, are you hating on my beagle? Jeez, what did he ever do to you? And so look, they're round in the manufactured taut world. If you square them up top and bottom and then roll them in your hands, you're gonna get fairly close, but these are gonna be essentially rustic because they'll all be a little bit different size. And then I'm just gonna put them on a piece of parchment and I'll continue. Look, if you wanna use like a, uh, a measure, a tablespoon thing, whatever they're called, you can get them closer to the exact same size. I do think it's kind of fun when they're not perfect, but I do want them to look nice. And your thing is always that yes. different sizes cook. Max is, Max is correct when he says that things that are the same size cook at the same time. There you go. Look, these guys are looking nice, right? So just carry on. Love this. I love this. It's quite cathartic. I think the key is squeeze them this way, make them tight, try to flatten the ends, and then when you roll them a little bit, they'll have that little pressed deal that is important for keeping them together. And that was about as vague as those yeah, words. Yeah, I don't even know what I don't know I what I said either. So go like this, get a little bundle. Squeeze it in your hand, right? Then start to do this, flatten the tops and the bottoms. Do some more. Squeezing them is important. 
Okay, I'm done talking. You watch, and I'll see you on the other side. I'm not saying anything else. You can just fucking sue me if you want, but these are beautiful fucking tots, aren't they? Yeah. I'm not talking to the camera, I'm talking to you guys now. I have to admit, my, my rough guesstimates here are coming up pretty good. They're close to the same size. These are definitely larger than, I think, like standard frozen tots. Yes. But they'll shrink a little bit. They'll shrink a little bit, and if a little tot is good, a big one's got to be better. Not the size of the tot, it's the size. Don't. Swag. Don't. 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 And we're down. 21, perfectly. I was going to say I thought a couple potatoes like this would make two dozen. We're pretty close. I could put one more together here, and I'm not going to because I want to keep it at that beautiful number. All right, I rinse my hands, we go to the oil, and we fry. All right, with our oil somewhere around 360 degrees, we put in our tots. And if it wasn't obvious, we're gonna be looking for beautiful, crispy, golden brown. Yes, I know they already have a little color because of the smoked paprika, but still gonna be easy to tell. And we will not overload this pan, we'll do about half. Put too many in, it brings the temperature down. They don't cook the right way and you're unhappy. But of course, because they're not completely covered, you're gonna have to give them a little turn every now and then. This is probably a three to four to five minute process, as we'd say in Canada. Look, of course you could use a deep fryer if you had one. And if you don't have one, any pot will do. But a cast iron on the grill is the perfect thing to do, especially if it's got my initials on it. Let's look at one. Lovely. Oh. You know what? It's hot in there. Who would have thought? Surprise, surprise, surprise. Look at them. Not done. All right, so we're here. That's what we do. They have shrunk a little bit. So let's gently pick everybody up. Let them drip, drip on our paper towels. Oh, man. I want to eat all of these so badly. Down they go. We'll let this get a little bit hotter before we put the other guys in. But these guys, we can give a little hit of salt to. The time to add salt is when they just come out of the oil and they're still a little bit glisteny and, oh man. All right, so give us about uh, two minutes. We'll put the rest of them in. And we're back. Oil's hot. And in go our little fellows. Please be careful not to burn yourself, he says, hoping, trying not to make an example of himself. And we let them do their thing. Boy, we are fighting hard not to eat the ones that we just pulled out. Right, boys? Yes. See, Poppy. All right, now let's take a look. I think we can turn. Yeah. Oh, look at that. You know, I could be using something a little more intelligent than a spoon here, but it certainly works. Tongs would work. Yep, don't have any out here with me. So let's just go with the old spoon. Give it a goo. It works fine. All right, we're on the back half. Look, gauge your own stuff. If they're not looking crispy, then leave them in longer. But you for sure want your oil somewhere between 350 and 370, or it won't be frying, it will be soaking, and that's bad. That just makes for a greasy, gross tot. And when you've got beautiful, even doneness across the board, your buddies are ready to come out. Look at this. Wow. So nice. All right, same thing. Out they come. Little drip, little kosher salt. You know what time it is, boys? It's time to eat some tots. Wow, the smell of them is so, it's almost too much. Ow, and they're hot, jeez. Well, I guess I could use something, huh? Damn it, look how gorgeous they are. There you are, buddies. There you are, my little friends. Now that's a tot, am I right? Is that a tot or is that a tot? Those are great. It's a tot. It's a tot, it really is. And I especially like the fact that I don't think they look like they've been machine pressed. I did a pretty good job and they're kind of the same shape, but these are not a bag of frozen guys. You know what they are? They're something that should be eaten. Now the question is, where do I go? Do I go to the hoisin and chili sauce? How about the truffle garlic aioli? Or the chipotle mayo lime? The curry ketchup? Or the spicy honey mustard? Where do we go? Where do we go? Where do we go? That's where we go. The truffle garlic. You, my friend, are mine. Just that, that just happened. Oh. I mean, I've got the amazing, delicious, perfectly crispy on the outside, but light, fluffy, and soft on the inside, taut. Mm. And then there's that truffle aioli. Gosh. Okay, fine, I'll just have a little bit 
in the curry ketchup. You hear the crunch? Mmm. Mmm. Is that good? All right. Please make these. They're so delicious. They don't even compare to the regular ones. Yes, there's some work, but just make them. Potatoes, cheapest thing ever. Cast iron pan, you know where to get that. Oil, you got it. Spices, do whatever you want. Hey, look, barbecue sauce from the store in your fridge would be amazing on these. We're just trying to give you some options. All right, everybody, thanks for hanging out. Love you being here. Click subscribe, click like, click the notification bell. On Wednesday is gonna be our three million subscribers. Oh, uh, and it's gonna be a Max big is, one. Max is pushing for our three million subscriber special on Wednesday, and it's gonna be great. For our two million subscriber special, we made a 20 pound a cheeseburger, four or five pound patties. Just let your mind go. What could we do for three million?